name. people who've also died because of senseless killings by cops but we really really want to highlight Breonna Taylor tonight because of the absolutely absurd indictment that was brought down in Kentucky a few days ago so as many of you guys probably already know um, there were three cops involved in the murder of Breonna Taylor and only one was indicted on a charge and that charge was for the bullets that missed Breonna Taylor so this, this cop was charged with reckless endangerment um, because of the bullets that went askew and could have hit someone else, not for the bullets that actually pierced her body and killed her. That ain't right. That ain't right. I also want to note tonight that today is the birthday of Laquan McDonald. Yes, it is. Laquan McDonald, as many of you know, was uh, a teenager who was in special ed classes who was murdered by the CPD a few years back. We were able to get his murderer convicted. In the history of police, this is the only time that a cop has been convicted for the murder of a black person while on duty. I think we deserve a pat on our backs for doing that, but it also is something to, to drive us forward that we were the first people to do that here in Chicago, and we damn sure better not be the last. You better believe it. When I look around today, I'm reminded that just a few months ago, I called a protest at this same time, at this same location, and there were about 50 people, and I thought that was amazing. And now... Woo! And now, just a few months later, we have... I think 200 people are here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't counted, but I think that's right. These are 200 people, 200 of your neighbors. I want you to, I want you to make some noise if you live in this ward. How you guys doing tonight? Make some noise! How you guys doing? My name is Lamar Whitfield. I am the CEO and the founder of the No More Foundation. I'm here to stand with you guys because I'm at a No More moment, just like the rest of us, especially with the disgusting decision that we just seen made on public television. We have to remind each other to come together like we are doing right now, because once we unite, it's no stopping us. Yes. We have to remind each other that we are the people that keep this country going forward. So we make the decision. Just like they said, we could not come out the house into the streets. Look around and look at what we're doing right now. We're out of the house into the streets, and we're making our voice being heard the proper way. So I want to remind everybody, continue this. Continue to have the no more moment just like I've had so we can make a difference, and we can remind people that if they decide to come out, we are here. If they decide to use their voice, we are here. And if you feel like we feel and you are at a no more moment, come out of your house into the streets and stand with us and remind people that we run this country. We move this country forward. We can make things happen as long as we stick together. Remember that don't let anyone divide you from the person that don't look like you. As long as you stand with that person that looks the opposite of you, you are now doing the job you were sent here to do. Don't let a color define what you're going to make as a decision. Let's continue to stand together, guys, and let our voice be heard. No more. No more. 
No more. No more. That's right. Make some noise. Josh and Luke, who've been longtime organizers in the 46th Ward for CPAC, to tell you a little bit about what CPAC is, why it's important, why we're here in the ward demanding CPAC. Thank you, Luke and Josh. How's everyone doing? All right. Woo! So, my name is Luke, and this is Josh, right. and we're part of the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, if you haven't heard of us. Um, it's a black-led, left-led organization originally founded by Angela Davis. And since 2012, we've been fighting in this city for community control of the police through something called the Civilian Police Accountability Council, if you haven't heard of it. What community control of the police means is not simply an oversight council, as a lot of folks have talked about. What it means is that we, as the residents of Chicago, get to control and decide who polices our streets and how they do it and who those officers are. And that's fundamentally different. It's fundamentally different from a lot of the proposals that have been sent out here that are just nothing but bullshit that don't actually change the hands of the power structure of who controls the police in this city. And I want to talk about one thing specifically about, so, CPAC, woo! So, CPAC would be a democratically elected board of 11 council members that would have complete control over, over the police, like I said. Some of the powers would include complete control over the police budget. If we want to talk about defunding the police, that's the way to do it. If we want to talk about deciding the policies and procedures of what officers can do on the streets, CPAC is a way to do that. And if we want to have a board where we will elect the people that will decide who's negotiating the Fraternal Order of Police contract, CPAC will do that too. That's right. And one thing, specifically, one thing specifically that's been on my mind, specifically about the Breonna Taylor case, is that a lot of folks talk about, and you know, now it's become into the news, of this idea of no-knock warrants. Uh-huh. And... You know, this idea that officers are supposed to be able to just barge into people's homes without announcing themselves on Constitution. Well, there's an issue here in if we want to get rid of that, we need to have a mechanism to do that. And I want to talk about how CPAC would make that happen. So a lot of folks have heard about the consent decree, right? You've heard that that's, you know, Mayor Lightfoot and a lot of aldermen cite that as a reason. No, we're talking about police accountability. We have the consent decree. Well, you know, some of the things about the consent decree, okay, maybe they're good, maybe they're not. But one of the things specifically is part of the consent decree actually bans no-knock warrants in the city of Chicago. Guess what do you think the Chicago Police Department are still doing? They are still performing no-knock warrants. We have a federal judge that has said no no-knock warrants. We have... Uh, lawsuits in the city of Chicago from attorneys that have said that they're still engaging in this despite the fact that the consent decree says do not do this. But there's a wink and a nod between the Chicago Police Department and judges that say, well, just don't officially tell them I told you to do that. that CPAC right? would change the game yes. because what that does is it says if you want to continue to violate the policies that we as the democratically elected representatives of the people of Chicago have said no to, then you're going to be off the force. Yes. You will not be able to carry a badge and a gun to violate people's rights. And with CPAC, we can prevent the next Breonna Taylor. We can prevent the next Rakia Boyd. We can prevent the next Laquan McDonald. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Josh. We've both have been organizing for CPAC in this ward for five years and pushing on our aldermen to sign on to the ordinance who refuses to do it. I'll turn it over to Josh. So I think Luke summed it up pretty well what CPAC is, what the power dynamics are going to be once we get that power. And I want to talk a second about our alderman, Alderman Kappelman, who's right down the street. That's right. He has not signed. We've been organizing this ward for a long time, and he is actively gentrifying this ward. He has not signed on to CPAC. He refuses to do so, even as we have uh, talked to him about it, addressed his concerns. And uh, we just need you to uh, keep pushing him, hold his feet to the fire. 
He tells us that we need to go to compromise with him. No, Alderman, you need to compromise with us. You need to compromise with us. We are your constituents. We have the power. You compromise with us. And CPAC is about power. That's all I have to say. When I say CPAC, you say fight back CPAC. Fight back. CPAC. Fight back. CPAC. Fight back. CPAC. Fight back. CPAC. And you know what? Josh's speech just now just reminded me of something. Um, Kobe Guillory, who's one of the lead organizers for Chicago Alliance Against Racism and Political Repression, something that he's been saying a lot recently, which has really hit my heart, which is the cops can do a lot of things to us. The cops can beat us. The cops can kill us. I was arrested on the corner of, of Montrose and Sheridan just a few weeks ago um, for... Yes! I was arrested on the corner of Montrose and Sheridan just a few weeks ago for trying to film a black man getting arrested. Wow. Um, luckily, I was already on live stream for Facebook, and so I was filmed getting the, you know, I filmed myself getting the police tackling me down to the ground. I have them on tape saying that they want to curb stomp me. I have them on tape saying all kinds of vicious, nasty shit. Well, and my, my case was dismissed because I had that video. But we know that the cops are doing this kind of stuff all the time and it's not getting caught on video. And so what Kobe said that really hit my heart was that, you know, the cops can do a lot of shit to us, but what they can never do is outnumber us. more of us than them and that is our power and that is our strength as long as we stay unified and work together in this movement Absolutely. so today is one step of that journey here in this ward there are things like this happening in every ward around the city at all different days and as long as we keep working together we know that we'll get CPAC passed we know that we'll defund the police we know that we're gonna make steps forward That's right. <laughs> Action for Justice. Um, we're a grassroots, member-controlled organization fighting for power for low and moderate-income people um, in this community, but working as we have over the last several decades, really, with our brothers and sisters all around the city and really around the country and around the world. To me, it, it's absolutely no surprise that this alderman over here mm -hmm. has not signed down to CPAC. Just a little history um, that we keep repeating because we want people to understand this. This alderman, before he was the alderman, built his base on racist targeting That's of right. black and brown families in this community. That ain't as a right! Gentrification. This alderman set up with like managers of 920 set up a system where there would be bi-weekly meetings where he would come in, the local homeowner, white citizens council on Lakeside, not the same people, not the good people, there used to be the white citizen, Lakeside neighbors over there. They would actually meet and they would talk about this family's gotta go, this family's gotta go. And as a result of that, Uptown is one of the few communities that in the last 20 years has less um, black and Latino and Asian and Native American people than had 20 years ago. It's part of a specific plan. He won't sign on to CPAC because he is part of the racist establishment of the, and the, the coalition between the political forces and gentrification. But we can get him out of there and we can put enough pressure on between that people in the streets 
we should not allow the, his office to function until he signs on to CPAC. That's right. As a step towards the abolition of police in the CPAC now, and we need to use our collective power to make that happen. We need to keep on being in the streets, keep on fighting. There's a long battle. It's been a long battle. It will be a long battle, but we will win. All power to the people. How are you guys doing? Are you mad? Are you mad? Because I'm mad. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard, but so far the FOP has been negotiating a contract with the city of Chicago. In response to the 17 pages of reform that were given to the fraternity of police, items that needed to be changed, the FOP was outraged. And they set back a financial only counter saying that they wanted a 17% raise over four years. Now, I don't know about y'all's jobs. In 2019 alone, we, Chicago taxpayers, paid $113 million in police misconduct settlements. Laquan McDonald, Rakia Boyd, Betty Jones, countless names snuffed out, hurt, people injured, people abused. Now at my job, when I make a mistake, I get fired. At my job, when I make a mistake, I don't get a raise. Which means that, by logic, that Chicago police is doing exactly what it was made to do. Police stations all over the country are doing exactly what they were built to do, which is intimidate, and violate communities all over the country. Yeah. Right, right, that's right. So we need, we need things like CPAC. We need to defund the police. Yes. We need to stop giving them money so that they can turn around and hurt us. That's the first thing. And we need to stick together. Exactly. We need to stick together because the, the only reason why we are on this side is because we do not have the money to shelter ourselves from this problem. Because police from their inception in the United States have been installed to protect property. And what we saw the other day was Breonna Taylor's murderers getting off, except for one, on a wanton <laughs> endangerment misdemeanor. Was that police are out to protect property. And I don't know about y'all, but 1865, I ain't property no more. Right. I'm a person. And Black Lives Matter. It will continue to matter. Black people are, we are people. We are. And workers matter, teachers matter. We have a na nationwide pandemic, hundreds of thousands of people. 200,000 people dead. We need to start coming together and raising our fists because if right. we are waiting for other people to bring us out, right. we will all get eliminated. Right. And I know, I know that voting, voting can sometimes seem like cold comfort in the face of the lies and in the face of these histories but we do have to come together and we have to use our voices as best as we can. And in this moment, come November, the strongest thing you can do is get yourself to a polling place and mark these things down. You need to go out and vote. Because at this point, particularly when it comes to our presidents, we need to have people that we can work with. We need to have people that we can pressure. Donald Trump feels no pressure. And why would he? Why would he, a billionaire, why would he? Why would he care? Why would a fascist care? He's, it's happening exactly the way he wants it to happen. Now, Joe Biden is a mess. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> OK? Kamala, a mess. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst. Maybe the dom 
to Adama. It's, it's either, listen, it's either getting shot in the head or shot in the leg. And listen, I can limp, all right? So. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that it's easy to escape in moments of joy and in moments of comedy and in moments where we are all banding together, but I want everyone to understand the existential seriousness. There are, we are in mourning. We should be in mourning. We cannot do this anymore. So I want everyone to look around. I want everyone to see all of the people that are here. And I want you to know that there are strangers who will fight for you. There are strangers who will vote for you. There are strangers who will teach people in their communities. And we have to keep it going. Because I do not want to be the next name that you chant out. That's right. So deep. Oh, man, that's so deep. Okay, so I want everyone to promise me that they will use, I know that it's hard because we're tired, I know I am so tired, but we have to use our energy and we have to get together because five fingers might not do much, but put together in a fist and we can strike a mighty blow. That's right. <laughs> Network and one of our esteemed neighbors, come on up here. Thank you. When I think of what was done to Brianna Taylor and so many, to me, it's not enough to just say her name. It's not just enough to say slogans. We need specific change in this city because that is the way we can best honor her memory and the memories of so many others who have been murdered by the police, both in this city and around the, the, the country. We cannot be satisfied with platitudes from politicians. Yeah. And platitudes... is precisely what we have gotten out of Mayor Lightfoot. Platitude after platitude after platitude. I watched the news the other night. I listened to her crocodile tears. Because I've been around long enough to know her record. Her record as head of the Office of Professional Standards where the amount of cops who were actually found guilty of wrongdoing actually went down from its previously very pathetic subnational level. And then, of course, she was head of the, uh, uh, of the police board where that record continued. And now that she's in the mayoralty, we see over and over again her promises broken. We hear her making noises about perhaps not funding the Cop Academy to the tune of $95 million before the election, and then post-election, she's talking about not only giving more money to the Cop Academy, she's talking about opening up mini Cop Academies in schools around the city. Oh. Someone before me, before me mentioned the consent decree something I think is like two-thirds of the goals that were supposed to have been met under the latest deadline for the consent decree by the CPD, which she ultimately is the head of, were not met. That's on her doorstep. And of course we don't trust her to negotiate a new police contract. But I think we need to go to really, aside from CPAC, the heart of the matter, and that is the insulting amount of money that these police get in our city. Many of you already know. Many 
of you already know that the police get some 40% of the operational budget in this city, and that is an insult. But let me break it down a little bit more. Each individual cop, as they get hired into the city, between salary and benefits, costs the city $140,000 a year. Each individual cop, $140,000 a year. Just think what that kind of money could do for our libraries, for our schools, for our mental health programs, for our housing. The question is, how do we get there? How do we get there? We've been out in the streets, and like many of you, I'm tired, I'm angry. But I'm going to keep on being out here because, frankly, that's the only way we get change. That's the only way we got a murder conviction in the Laquan McDonald murder case. It's the only way. And what that holds true also for defunding the police. In early 2016, in the run-up to that year's mayor election, I wrote an article pointing out that the Chicago police, uh, we have more Chicago cops per capita than 647 other cities of over 50,000 people in the city of Chicago. And I got into a big fight with Crane's Chicago businesses, Greg Hines, okay? And it was nasty. And all the mayoral candidates, including the most left wing, as you may remember, all were calling for more cops, which is something as someone who's lived in this city for decades, I can say you hear every single damn year, more cops, more cops, more cops. What changed that tune? Because recently, that same damn Greg Hines, about a month ago, came out with a column and said, we're spending too much money on cops. And the lead article in Crane Chicago Business was also saying, we spend too much money on cops. What changed it was you. You changed the narrative. You put the issue of defunding the police on the political agenda for the first time in my adult lifetime, and I salute you. I salute especially the young black activists who led the charge on that. Which leads us to November, because we're being told that the way this is going to change is to put someone else in the White House. And I hate Trump. I absolutely loathe the man. But I also know that Joe Biden-type policies the neoliberal defunding of our schools, of defunding of our communities, whether it's by Rahm Emanuel or politicians in the national level, well, what paved the way for Trump? Right. So right. vote for whoever you want to in November. I'm not going to discourage anyone from voting, but remember, the only way that real change is made, the way we got so many people saying we need to defund the police is by being out in the streets and demanding no compromise with these bastards. Because the politicians of the Republican Party will give us the straight out unvarnished racism, but we'll get the damn platitudes from the Democrats that won't do a damn thing to save people like Breonna Taylor, that didn't do a damn thing to save Laquan McDonald here in this city. Most of the demonstrations in this country demanding Black Lives Matter have happened in cities run by Democratic mayors. And it's not that the Republicans are any alternative. They've already made that clear. Bunch of racists. But we are the change. We are the change, not the politicians.
their alternative. Whether it's cops, whether it's this disgusting health care system, whether it's an ecological crisis, there is no alternative to us winning. We have to take down this system, otherwise we all go down, and we know that. So um, next up, I want to call up Angela Clay, who has been a neighbor for a long time, to come up and say a few words. This gets real emotional, I have to tell you. I'm five months postpartum, so this hits a little different. Um, I am, if you are a new resident to the Uptown community, you will see me a lot because this is my home. The people that you see around here have been put here on this land for a reason. If you have migrated to the beautiful Uptown community, you are here for a reason. This land is sacred. It belongs to the people of the indigenous tribes that once stood here. You are standing on the backs. You are standing. You are standing on the back of women who look like myself, who look like Breonna Taylor. I could never imagine not coming home to my five-month-old baby because a police officer decided to kill me in my home. I cannot imagine my mother not coming home because a police officer decided to kill her at a traffic stop. I can't afford for Miss Dorothy, one of my beautiful, beautiful neighbors back here, to not make it back home to her family because of a trigger happy cop. The police are just the fall guys. Don't, don't get it twisted. They're not even the real problem. The problem is what they're standing for. When we say Black Lives Matter, it's not just because the police mysteriously have been filmed killing us. That's not what this is about. What it means is my beautiful melanated baby should have access to the same can access every child in this city has. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to meet a, a quota. I shouldn't have to meet a tax bracket. I shouldn't have to meet a skin tone. I shouldn't have to meet a hair requirement. I shouldn't have to meet none of that. My baby should not have to meet none of those requirements. Yes. We are human. I don't know how many times we have to say it. This is why it's so frustrating. Because your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, they were here too. Our grandparents were in this same predicament 40, 50, 60 years ago. How many times do we have to keep coming here and having these conversations? You know what's happening. You live in one of the greatest cities in the world, and you know what? They thrive off of black people's dying. They, they thrive off of our death. They thrive off of our poverty. They thrive off of our miseducation. That's right. So if you are here on this sacred land, get used to being out here fighting with people that look like me. Get used to understanding that you are now a part of the solution. Ain't no more watching. I love all the signs in the windows that say Black Lives Matter, but that has to come with action. We are making history. I don't have, I have no more emotions to be mad, y'all. I have no more. What they say, I'm fired up, won't take it no more? Yep. It's a wrap. This system knows it's a wrap. Yep. That's why we here, we got to social distance, we got to put these masks on, because they know what's coming. That's right. You can't stop us, mask on or off. We're going to be here every single day, because there's not going to be That's another right. Breonna Taylor for nothing. Right? Black lives don't just matter. Black people deserve to
to be joyful. They deserve to thrive. They deserve to have nice things in their life. And not just like Breonna Taylor, who was a healthcare worker. There's a lot of conversation about how Breonna Taylor was one of the good ones. You know, that she was a healthcare worker. She was out here saving other people and her life couldn't even be saved. We got people on this block whose lives deserve to matter, deserve to thrive. They deserve to have nice things. They deserve to have homes, houses, food on the table. They deserve all of those things. And not because of what they do in society, but because they are a person. So I'm gonna say Black Lives Matter and then I want you to say Black Joy Matters. Black Lives Matter. Black Joy Matters. Black Love Matters. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Love Matters. Black Culture Matters. Black Culture Matters. And I want to recognize that too. We got people of a lot of different races out here today. You know, as a brown person, I feel like it's super important to have solidarity with black people. I know that there's Asian people out here today, white people out here today, indigenous people out here today. And we all have to remember that being in solidarity with black people doesn't make us lesser. No, we gotta quit not. that disunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So next up, I'm, not, I'm gonna call on a white person actually. Uh, so Liz, would you come up here and say a few words? That's right. Hey y'all, I'm Liz. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna say a few quick things and then I'm gonna get out of here. Let the black and brown people take the mic again. Uh, a lot of people are talking about how it's radical to say defund the police. How it's radical to say we demand CPAC. You know what's radical? Looking around at the broken streets, at the homeless people living on the streets, yeah. at the absolutely appalling conditions in our schools, and saying, no, let's give more guns to these people. Let's give more body armor to these people. That's right. That is radical. Yeah. We are common sense right here. That's it. And, uh, talking about youth power, Liz uh, goes to a local high school. So I think it's really important to call that out and say it's so great to have young people out here speaking the truth. Because like she said, there's nothing more obvious than the democratic right of us to control who polices us. around in our streets with impunity. There's nothing simpler to say than to say that. It's our democratic right. It's our right as people. Um, and thank you so much for coming out here. We have a few more speakers before it hits seven o'clock. We're gonna keep it tight here. Um, so Lux, you wanna come up here and say a few words? Let's go, Lux. Hi everybody. I'm 15, my name is Lux, and I'm Hispanic. Woo! I've seen a lot of people talking about the system is broken, the system is, needs to be reformed. But I don't believe that, because I know my history. The cops were the original slave catchers. You cannot reform a system that was never meant for us. the system is thriving yeah. it was never meant for us so we cannot be reformed it must be abolished <laughs> I've also seen a lot of people saying that Breonna Taylor did not deserve to be killed because she was a successful black woman but also 
That doesn't mean just because she was successful, she did not deserve to be killed. Black poor people matter. Black homeless people matter. Black gang fingers matter. Everybody. I've also seen a lot of people just posting on social media and posting black screens. Ooh. And I just want to say, F all of that! <laughs> if you can't understand that this movement needs everybody to get the f out of your house, get the f away from me. This is a human rights movement, okay? <laughs> You know, the politicians, the government, they're scared of us. They're scared of the youth. They're scared of everyone. They're scared that we won't go home. They're scared that we'll stay out here. And that's what I'm going to do. If I have to be out here every single day, then I will. I don't give a I think Lux brings up an important point that it's, and I think Angela brought up this point too, which is at the end of the day, it's up to us to watch each other's backs. That's right. yep. At the end of the day, we can't trust the police to keep us safe. I want to recognize that just a few doors down here is Kappelman's office. You know what, earlier today, one of Kappelman's main strategies is trying to pit the, the public again, and the business community against each other. Yep. Yep. And I know that earlier today, Kappelman walked these very streets, walked into these very businesses, and told them that a mob was coming. Oh, wow. He walked into these businesses and said, there's a protest tonight at 6, y'all better watch out. Because wow. these wild mother are going to come for your business. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, to be honest, but, you know, I think it's just another tactic, right? It's another tactic by an a, a, a alderman who's in the pocket of the developers, who's in the pocket of the business interests, to try and pit the businesses against us. But you know what? You know why I even know that Kappelman did that? Because one of those business managers reached out to me and said, Kappelman came and did this, but I got your back. <laughs> that business manager said, take up as much space as you need. Take up as much space as you need. I hope a shit ton of people come out. There are people who are, who are business owners in this community who support what we're doing here. And I'm sure there are people in this crowd who are business owners, who work at these businesses along this block, who support what we're doing. And sowing that kind of disunity is, n is not necessary right now. Um, so thank you so much.